view of the Bible, Isaiah. We left off with God really making declarations of who he is, the master of all things, stretching out the heavens, uh, the one who spread out the earth all alone. I mean, he, he just did it. He can do it by himself. And, and so uh, we see this magnificence, and now we're going to look into how he works in history and his sovereignty and actually changing people and using people, some of them, he says, that aren't even his. Not even, they're not really his people, but he's going to take them and use them anyway for his purposes. And we see this uh, coming up in Isaiah 44, 28. It is I who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. And he will perform all my desire. And he declares, he declares of Jerusalem, she will be built. And of the temple, your foundation will be la laid. In chapter 45, the verse, verse 1, Thus says the Lord to Cyrus, his anointed, who I have taken by the right hand to subdue nations before him, to loose the loins of the kings, to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. And so he makes these things. He's going to use Cyrus to do these things. <clears throat> and he says in other places, that Cyrus is not even his, you know, even though Cyrus isn't really submitted to him, Cyrus is going to do his, his bidding. Cyrus is going to act on his behalf. Uh, we see this in the book of Ezra, as we went back before, that Cyrus makes this decree that uh, Jerusalem is going to be rebuilt. So God uses Cyrus, works through him. And here we find Israel, Isaiah prophesying this about Cyrus like 100, 150 years before Cyrus is around. This is just in that same setting where, where God's declaring, hey, you know how, who, who, why you know that I'm God? You know, I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to uh, tell you before it happens what's going to happen. And so we see that this is reflected as we go on into chapter 46. I'm skipping over a lot in 45. You really need to read this. Isaiah is an incredible book to read. And you need to read all of this for yourselves. But in uh, Isaiah 46, 9, he says, Remember the former things long past, for I am God and there is no other. I am the God and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things which have not been done, saying my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. <clears throat> so here's where you see that when people talk about God as sovereign, he is a king, reigns over all the earth, reigns over the heavens and the earth, reigns over the universe. The uh, thing is, is he's established some things for, for people to do in the earth, which he's relented of his thing. He's not, just, he's not just making everybody do everything. But there are times when he exercises that rulership, even over individuals' lives, to perform uh, a purpose for him. We see that in Isaiah as he brought nations against uh, Israel and Judah. We see that throughout the Old Testament. He had a purpose for those nations to come and bring his discipline to his people. Uh, and uh, of course, then we also see that he, he reprimands those that, that uh, acted uh, ruthlessly in bringing that uh, discipline to his people. So we're going to jump ahead to Isaiah uh, 47. He's declared that the reason that he's God and he can declare Cyrus is going to do this, and the reason that you can know he's God is because he declares this way ahead of time. He tells you what's going to happen. Uh, we shift a little bit here in Isaiah 47. It's talking about uh, putting confidence in things other than God. You know, he just made all these declarations, said who he is, and he declares the end from the beginning. And then he acts, has a time here he's addressing people that decide to turn to sorcery and spells and astrologers and soothsayers and all of this, looking for their direction and their help. And that's very applicable in our time. We've got so many that are looking for all kinds of things other than God. They're looking at their, their zodiac signs and thinking this is going to help them declare things, people that predict by the stars, as is addressed in Isaiah 47. Uh, I'd, I would say, uh, people, uh, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I mean, God's real clear about not turning to these things, uh, not looking for those things. And here's what he says, which is really kind of scary. In verse 12 of Isaiah 47, it says, Stand fast now in your spells and in your many sorceries, with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to profit. Perhaps you may cause trembling. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let now the astrologers, those who prophesy by the stars, those who predict by the new moons, stand up and save you from what will come upon you. So he says, if you're going to put your trust in them, if you're going to look to them, in that time of judgment, he's going to say, okay, let them deliver you. See how good they're going to do. You don't want to be in that place. You know, he's just saying, you trusted in them, you look to them. Okay, it comes to that time of judgment. 
uh, what if I don't answer you? And you just, you just go to your astrologers, you just go to your soothsayers, you just go to those that predict by the stars, and, and you find out from them. Let them save you in this time of calamity. I think one of the times in what we saw in Isaiah 26 is during judgments on the earth, the inhabitants of the earth learn righteousness. There's a turning and they realize that all these things are just kind of games. There's no power in it. Uh, and earlier in Isaiah, and we skipped over that, it says, you know, you take a piece of wood and you burn some of it for fire, you do this, that, and you make, and out of the rest of it, you make an idol and then you worship down, you worship it and say, you know, lead me, you know, I worship you. You know, you carve the thing out yourself. And it's such foolishness that some of the things we imagine, we make up our own gods in our minds sometimes. And when we, uh, you know, he says in those times of calamity, if that's what you're going to trust, uh, I'll let you do that. But these times of calamity are made to shake us out of those misconceptions and turn to the true and living God. And so it's, it's important for us at this time to really, uh, is Jesus the truth? Is he really the one? Is he really the Messiah? If he is, we need to put our trust in him. And if we're not hearing anything right at the moment, you know, we're not hearing the answer we want to hear, don't go turn into some other thing looking for some answer. Wait on the Lord. You know, you'll be blessed if you wait on the Lord and wait for His answer. I'm going to jump to uh, Isaiah 48. Not really jumping. I'm kind of going chapter to chapter, which it's hard, hard not to do in Isaiah. But in 48, I'm going to pull out something there in verse 12. He says, Listen to me, O Jacob, even Israel, whom I called. I am He. I am the first. I am also the last. And you've heard this before. Interesting to see who's, who's speaking here. Surely my hand founded the earth, my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand together. Assemble all of you and listen. Who do you think is speaking here? Sounds like the one who made heaven and earth, you know, the God of all the earth. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord, or Yahweh, Jehovah, loves him. He shall carry out his good pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Indeed, I have called him. I have brought him, and he will make his way successful. And then here's a really curious verse in verse 16 of Isaiah 48. Come near to me. Who's speaking? Well, in one sense it says it's the Lord Jehovah, God. Come near to me. Listen to this. From the first I have not spoken in secret. From the time it took place I was there. And now the Lord God, here is Adonai Yahweh, the anointed I Am, has sent me and his spirit. And here's the first, here's a, a, one of the clear indications in the Old Testament of what we call the Trinity. Here we're saying, someone who identifies as the Lord who made heaven and earth says he was sent by the anointed I Am, and he sent him and his spirit. And here we see uh, in this verse in 48, uh, 16, some of the early signs that God manifests himself, reveals himself in three persons here. In this one speaking, who appears to be the Messiah being revealed in Isaiah ahead of time, before he's actually been born into the earth, and the Father who sent him, and his spirit that he also sends. So. Interesting, at least. In chapter 49, uh, there's a promise here. Uh, in my, my Bible, it just says, uh, a promise to Zion. It says, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, and the Lord has forgotten me. Anyone ever feel like they're forgotten by the Lord? I think that's a common, common place. But here's the, here's the message to uh, his people, <clears throat> to, to Judah at the time. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? What do you think? I mean, this is kind of a rhetorical question saying, not likely. I mean, can a woman forget her nursing child? It's, that would, it almost, it takes like a mental illness or severe calamity for that to happen. Uh, it says, then he says, even these may forget, but I will not forget you. So he's comparing his, his love for us as that for a woman with a nursing child. And especially in those times when we feel like we have been deserted or he's not showing up. He says this, Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. And so here we have another a picture in Isaiah of actually the Lord describing in some ways of how he's going to, how much he loves us and how he's going to redeem us. He says, I've inscribed you on the palms of my hands. And we see in the New Testament that Jesus actually, he was uh, crucified and, and uh, 
Thomas, in wanting to identify that it was really Jesus risen from the dead, wanted to put his, his fingers in the nail scars in his hands and his hand into his side. And so here we see that the Lord loves us so much. He loves us more than even a nursing mother with their child. And even though they could forget, he won't forget you.